Hello and welcome to our beauty, lifestyle and fashion show. I'm your host Adeze Adwaka and these are the headlines. Afrobeat is escapism, Thames counters Buju Banton. But Brisky spotted hiding as she makes first public appearance at movie premiere in Lagos. Katy Perry defends collaborating with Dr. Luke on new album 143 after Backlash. Dipti Q's new luxury fragrance collection brings imaginary scents to life. And on our trending segment, in a new public statement, Thames countered Buju Banton's thoughts on Afrobeats. According to her, the purpose of the genre in Nigeria is to serve as an escape from the harsh reality and not necessarily to preach against societal ills. The Love Me Jeja Kruna stated this while reacting to Jamaican reggae legend Buju Banton's criticism of Afrobeats in a recent podcast. Banton claimed that Afrobeats had no substance and would fade away with time. Tem stated that she understood where Buju Banton was coming from. However, reggae is not Afrobeats and Afrobeats in Nigeria is specifically for escapism. That's the purpose of Afrobeats, she said. I think I kind of agree with Thames on this one. I think we've given the news earlier about, you know, what Buju Banton said about reggae and, you know, the reggae in Nigeria not really passing out the message, you know, addressing political issues in Nigeria and all of that. And I think I agree with her in the terms that Afrobeats is not necessarily, you know, the type of music that you want to pass that kind of message. It's kind of music that keeps you calm, that takes you away from, you know, the harsh realities of life. It's songs that really uplift your spirit and make you happy. You want to dance. When you play music, Afrobeats, when you're playing an ashake, you don't want to be listening to, you know, what the government is doing, things that will be taking you back to where you're just living. You want to just have fun, party, you go to the club and forget about, you know, all the troubles that's happening in Nigeria. And I think I totally agree with her on that. And then for reggae music, I think I've seen a few reggae artists who have actually talked about the societal ills and the things that are happening in the country. And then also, Bonner also has been going in that line of direction in some of his songs where he talks about, you know, the things that have happened in Nigeria. And then funny enough, Nigerians still came for him and said, oh, you're talking about all the bad things in Nigeria, yet when it was time to protest, you'd not come out. So I think that's another reason why some of our artists are staying away from talking about what is happening in Nigeria and the societal ills. But then Afrobeat is Afrobeat. Afrobeat is just, you know, music that uplifts our spirit and makes us have fun and, you know, be happy. So I totally agree with Thames on that. And on our sporty segment, Bob Brisky has made her first public appearance at an event after her release from prison over abuse of the Naira. The social media personality, also known as the Mommy of Lagos, was cited at Filmhouse Cinema's landmark at the premiere of the weekend. However, Bob Brisky, who was gorgeously dressed in a black outfit, appeared to be hiding from the camera. In one of the clips where she was spotted with actress Faithia Williams and business executive Samuel Olatunji, Babriski was seen hiding behind what looked like shelves. Babriski, you cannot hide. You can't hide. Your skin alone is so bright, like you can't hide, okay? I don't know why he's hiding because, I mean, we've seen him already. I think he has released photos and videos, you know, um, when he came out of prison. He also had his birthday, and so we've seen photos and videos of all of that. But I think he's just trying so hard to stay low key. But Brisky doesn't want to get into trouble. He just wants to stay on his own, you know, have his own thing, do his own parties and all of that. So I think that's why he's kind of hiding. But but Brisky, you can never hide. Anywhere they see you, they must bring out their phones and cameras and will take videos of you. You are a celebrity. And even though I know that, you know, you're kind of controversial, mm, it still doesn't stop people from making videos and pictures of you. So just accept your fate. You're out, you're out. And people want to see you. They want to know more. They want to know if you're going to bring some drama because, but Brisky, you are attached with drama. So stop hiding. We love you. Just come out and do your thing and feel free. And on to our editorial segment, Katy Perry defended working with Dr. Luke on her forthcoming album, 143 despite the producer being accused of drugging and raping Kesha. While appearing on a podcast on Wednesday, the Dark Horse singer was asked why she decided to work with the songwriter. Perry said she was speaking from her own experience on the new project. When I speak about womanhood, I speak about feeling so empowered now as a mother. In 2014, 
Kesha filed a lawsuit against Dr. Luke, accusing him of drugging and raping her after a party in 2005. Dr. Luke denied the allegations and countersued Kesha, claiming she had legally defamed him with false and shocking allegations. In April 2016, a judge dismissed all of Kesha's claims of sexual assault, sexual harassment and gender violence in New York. The parties finally settled a legal battle in June 2023. Well, I, I kind of see why people are coming for um, Perry because she's all about women empowerment, you know, violence against women, you know, speaking up for women and, you know, women's rights. So I understand why they're coming for her. And, you know, seeing that she's associated with someone who has been accused of rape and sexual violence, it's kind of contradictory, right? So that's why they're coming for her. But then we are seeing now that the judge actually, you know, closed on all those claims that was made by Kesha. So now we don't even know which one is true. We don't even know if Kesha is saying the truth or if, you know, Dr. Luke is actually guilty of all of these allegations. But then there's also this thing about, you know, you knowing your friend and saying, mm -mm, I don't think my friend is going to do that and standing for that person and then also associating with that person in public. So I think that is why people are actually coming for Katie. But then all in all, the judge has actually dismissed this claim. So I don't see any reason why, you know, Katie should feel bad for working with someone who she sees as a friend and also feels like the person is right for her project. If the judge has said this guy is actually free and not guilty, I think everybody should accept that and just go with it. But if you're truly guilty, Dr. Luke, hmm, hmm, just be very careful because if your news comes out again, trust me you're going like jail time it is for you and on to our new collection diptyque paris the french fragrance house beloved for their candles is trying to answer the question of what would this smell like with their new perfume collection leo sons de diptyque for the new collection diptyque is expanding this tradition by imagining scents for natural treasures all natural elements with no discernible scents, such as a rosette crystal rock formation. To make this intriguing sense, the brand enlisted perfumers Fabrice Pellegrin, Alexandra Carling, Nathalie Seto, and Olivier Peugeot to imagine olfactory compositions that encompass five different elements, coral, mother of pearl, tree back, water lily, and desert rose. And don't forget to catch us up at Spice TV underscore Africa. Until the next episode, do have a lovely time. Bye-bye.